Galaxy Express 999. We've got Space Trains, Street Rats, Q from Street Fighter, and what seems to be a very bright future ahead of us. This is a space opera of sorts, set in a futuristic city, glazed in neon, which could be seen as some sort of precursor to the Akira craze. The main boy's even called Tetsuro. This is a giant space opera with a grand score and high concepts for the time. It executes everything very well. If this is the beginning of Toei's adaption phase, then it starts off running pretty smooth. We travel through many planets and solar systems, through 70s prog rock backgrounds and western taverns. We cover themes about post-humanism and the idea of removing humanity from their bodies to live for an eternity. To use strength that goes beyond human capability to fight for vengeance. The characters build and there's tons of twists and turns as the story unfolds. The film does a really good job of world building around the concept of this universe, especially while throwing in characters from another popular series at the time, Captain Harlock, which play a far bigger role than I was actually expecting in the plot. I will say it has a lot to cover in such a small time, which means that some of the themes are only just touched on. A lot of the character connections move at a very brazen pace for my personal tastes. Tetsuo's outlook seems to radically switch just halfway through the film without too much encouragement. A lot of the main women in the film have a classic 70s anime face. They all look a little too similar, which can make some scenes a little confusing. But overall, it's an epic journey through space and time, with giant explosions, love, twists, turns. The definition of a classic 70s anime, and I couldn't recommend it more for that. Especially if you're not willing to invest your time into 113 episodes of the anime.